hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to make a victorian corset with sleeves yes this victorian corset is going to have an armhole where you are going to attach your sleeves i know this is something you would like to know more about please keep on watching and let's get started if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you'll get notified anytime I upload a new video. For this corset, you'll be needing about 2 yards or 2.5 yards of any fabric of your choice. You'll also be needing a lining and also you'll be needing your interfacing. You need your interfacing for this corset also if you don't have an interfacing it is fine you can sew it without your interfacing also if you don't want to put it and the last but not the least thing you'll be needing is your boning i didn't show you here but you'll be needing either your plastic boning or your regiline boning i have a line marked across my paper and that will be the starting line which also serves as the shoulder line from the starting line, I'll go ahead and mark the chest line which is 9 inches. After that, I'll mark the bust line which is 11 inches. I'll go ahead and mark the under bust also which is 14 inches. And the waist line which is at 17 inches. And the full length of the top which is at 24 inches. I'll go ahead now and connect all those points together with a straight line. I am labeling my patterns now, the chest line, bust line, under bust, waist line and the full length of the top. I'll go in with the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 inch for allowance and I'm also going to mark it on the chest line and I'll connect with a straight line. Next, I'll mark a neck width of 3.5 inches and a neck depth of 3 inches and I'll connect with a curve. I'll come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slant and I'll connect it back to the neckline. I'll go in now with the bust measurements divided by 4. I'll mark it on the chest line and I'll go up by 3 inches and I'll make a mark there. From that 3 inches point, I'll come out by 0 0.75. I'll connect those three points together to form the ham hole. On the waistline, I'll go in with the waist measurements divided by 4 plus 2 inches allowance for that. Also on the hip line, I'll go in with the hip measurements divided by 4. I'll connect all those points together with my curve. On the bust line, I'll mark the bust span measurements divided by 2. I'll mark it on the bust line, on the waist line and also on the hip line and I'll connect with a straight line. I added 2 inches allowance for that on the waist line so now I'll go in by 1 inch on both sides of the dart leg and I'll connect it to the bust point. On the hip line, I'll come up by 2 inches, that is where the dart will end and I'll just connect it like so to the waistline. I'll mark the bust dart now which is 2 inches and I'll connect it to the bust point. This is an off shoulder corset top. The next thing now is to mark the off shoulder line. From the chest line, I came up by 2.5 inches and that is where the off shoulder line will be and I'll connect it with a straight line. Come to the shoulder line now and divide what you have on the shoulder by 2 and get the midpoint. Make a mark there and you are going to connect with a straight line to the bust point. I am going to tighten the neckline so I am coming out by 0.75 on both sides of the line on the off shoulder line and I am going to connect it to the bust point. The next thing I will do now is to tighten the under bust. 
So mark your under bust measurements and make your mark there. Whatever you have left from the line you marked, measure it out and you're going to divide it on both sides of the dart leg. So what I have there is 1.5 inches. So I'm just going to share it by putting half inch on the side facing the center front and I put one inch on the side facing the side front and I'm just going to connect with a curve. And then I am going to connect with a straight line to the full length of the top. I am going to slash open from this new line we created on the shoulder and close the bust that so that we can have lines for the Victorian corsets. When you're done closing the bust that this is what you're going to have and i'm just going to shade the parts that will be cut out so that we don't get confused so i'm just shading out the parts that we don't need the that parts where we don't need on this pattern to form the neckline i want a little bit of round neckline in front so i'm just going to come down by half inch from the chest line and i'll connect it like you see me doing The next thing now is to come to the waistline, divide what you have on the waistline into two and make a point there and you are just going to connect with a straight line all the way to the top following that point you make, just connect with a straight line. Go ahead and label that one and two. So for this Victorian corset, I'm going to be taking in 4 inches away from this client's waist measurement. The waist measurement is 34, so I'm going to be taking in 4 inches away from the waist measurement. For this first line I created, I'll go in by 0.25 on both sides of the dart leg. 0.25 on both sides. So that means for this line now, we've taken in 0.5. I am going to connect to the full length of the top and also to the neckline. Just connect like you see me doing. Come to the side front now and we are going to make another line at the side front. So on the waistline, I'm just going to get the midpoint on the waistline. And from that midpoint, I'm just going to bring in my ruler now and connect following that point on the waist. I'm just going to connect with a straight line all the way to the top and bottom. So now that we have our line there, I'm going to come out by 0.25 on both sides of that line on the waist line. So I'm just going to connect to the top and also connect to the full length of the top with a straight line. By the time you cut out your pieces unfold and everything, that means for this front, we've taken out a total of two inches. Label this other side three and four, and I'm going to come down to the M now and go up by 1.5 inches just to give it a little bit of curve at the M. And I'm going to connect it like you see me doing. You can also label the patterns in a way that you understand better by pointing arrows to the post point area and also labeling it center front side front and all those things just in a way that you understand the patterns and you won't mix it up when you are transferring to fabric that is all for the front pattern i'm cutting it out now So we have four pieces for the front pattern. The next thing now is to cut out the back pattern. I have a line marked across the paper and that is the shoulder line. From the shoulder line, I'll come down by 9 inches and that is the chest line. I'll also come down to 15 inches which is the waistline and also to 22 inches which is the full length of the top. You will notice a difference of 2 inches in the front length and the back length. 
that is because of the two inches we took in front as the bust that i am labeling the lines the shoulder line the chest line the waistline and the full length of the top this back pattern will not have a zip allowance because we are going to lace the back on the waistline i'll come in by 0.75 just to tighten the center back and i'll connect with a straight line to the full length and also to somewhere around the top of the pattern like you see me doing this part i am shading is going to be cut out we don't need it the next thing i'll do now is to go in with the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus 0.5 I'll mark it on the shoulder line and also on the chest line and I'll connect with a ruler. I'll mark a neck depth of 1 inch and a neck width of 3.5 inches and I'll connect with a curve. For the shoulder slant, I'll come down by 1 inch and I'll connect it back into the neckline. I'll come down to the chest line and I'll mark the bust measurements divided by 4. And from the shoulder slant, I'll divide what I have left into 2 and get the midpoint. I'll come out by 0.5 at the midpoint and I'll connect those 3 points together to form the armhole. On the waistline, I'll go in with the waist measurements divided by 4 and I'm going to add 1.5 inches allowance for that. And at the full length of the top, I'll mark the hip measurements divided by 4 and I'll use my curve to connect all those points together. I'll go ahead now and mark the bust pan measurements divided by 2. I'll mark it on the waistline, the chest line and also at the full length and I'll connect with a straight line. I'll go in by 0.75 on both sides of the dart leg at the waistline. And at the full length, I'll come up by 2 inches. That is where the dart will end. And from the chest line, I'll come down by 1 inch. That is where the dart will start from. And I'll just connect it with a ruler. Just like we did with the front, from the chest line, go up by 2.5 inches. That is where the off shoulder will start from. So just mark it like so and you connect with a ruler. Go ahead now and extend the bust pan measurement to this new line we created now and connect with a ruler. The next thing I'll do now is to tighten the neckline there with 0.25 on both sides and I'll connect it to the waistline. I'll also come out by 0.25 on both sides at the full length and I'll connect it to the waistline. Come to the side back now and divide what you have there from the chest line, divide it into two and connect with a straight line to the full length, just like you see me doing it. On the waistline, on the new dart line we created now, I'll come out by 0.5 I'll come out by 0.5 on both sides of the dart line. The reason is because for this back we'll only be having three pieces, unlike the front where we have four pieces. By the time we open up our patterns and cut those pieces into two, that means we have taken away two inches from the back. Same thing we took out in front, which is two inches. So that means we took out a total of four inches for both the front and the back. I just thought to include that for all the dots we created, the new lines we created for that, we won't be adding the allowance we took out back when we are transferring to fabric. No, we will only be adding our sewing allowance when I'm transferring to fabric. Because there will be lacing at the back, we need to take out some inches away from the center back. So I came out by 1.5 inches and I connected with a straight line to the top and bottom. I am just indicating there that there's going to be lacing with a sign there. So I'm labeling the patterns 1, 2 and 3 and just indicate arrows to the top and bottom. So just put any sign you like that you know that you'll be able to remember what you have there. I came down by half inch for the neckline just to give it a little bit of a round neck. I decided to do 1 inch instead of the half inch so I'll go with the green line. I'll cut it out now. For the front at the end, I came up by 1.5 inches, so I'm going to do the same thing for this back pattern. 
I'll go up by 1.5 inches and I'll connect with my curve like so. My fabric is folded into two. These are my front pieces. I know that you can't see my markings clearly on the fabric, but I have added this 0.75 allowance to the top and bottom and also to the sides of the pattern. Even for my side joining, I added this 0.75. So I only had that is 0.75 round the patterns. I had that is 0.75 because I'll be using my allowance for my bone casing. That is why I added is 0.75. So go ahead and add your allowance to the patterns too while transferring to fabric. I'll go ahead now and use the main fabric to cut out my lining piece and I'm going to add interfacing to the main fabric and also to the lining. My fabric is folded into two. These are my back pattern and I've added my 0.75 allowance to all the patterns, both the top, bottom and the sides. I want to show you how you can add a modesty panel to the back of your top. So just cut out the same length you have for the piece, for the center back piece you'll be adding your modesty panel to. The center back piece you'll be attaching your modesty panel to. Cut out the same length. The width I used here is 6 inches. Just make sure that whatever you're cutting is enough to cover the center back. I'll go ahead now and use the spaces to cut out my lining and I'm going to add interfacing to both the main fabric and the lining. These are my front pieces now, both the main fabric and the lining and I have ironed my interfacing on all the pieces. So I'm going to remove the paper now and pin each of the pieces the same way I will be sewing them. Separate the lining from the main fabric and just use the pattern you have on the lining piece to pin the main fabric the same way you'll be sewing them. So just use the pattern you have on the lining to arrange your pieces so that you don't make mistake on which side is supposed to be on which side. So just use the pattern you have on your lining to pin each of the pieces correctly. It is easier to do it this way when you still have the pattern on the lining. That way you can check which side is supposed to be on which side correctly. And when you are done pinning the main fabric, you are just going to do the same thing for the lining piece. Take your time and pin each of the pieces. And when you go over to the sewing machine, you are going to use the same allowance that you left when you were transferring to fabric. You are going to use that same allowance to stitch the sides correctly. If you added is 0.75 allowance, make sure that when you are joining the pieces together, you are taking in that 0.75 allowance you added so that at the end of the day, you will have a perfect fit. If you don't take in the same allowance, it's either you have a shortage or it is bigger than the measurement you are supposed to be having. I am done pinning the front part now. I am just going to go over to the sewing machine and join all those pieces together and I'll do the same thing to the lining. These are the back pieces. I added my interfacing to both the main fabric and the lining. So I'm just going to repeat the same process I did for the front pieces. Separate the pattern from the main fabric and go ahead and use the pattern on the lining to pin the back pieces the same way you are going to stitch it. So just go ahead and do that. And once you are done, go over to the sewing machine and join with the same allowance you left when you were transferring to fabric. Make sure that the allowance you left is what you are using to join it. This is what I have after I was done joining the back pieces and I went ahead to iron my seam flat and I've also done the same thing to the lining piece. For the front pieces, this is what I have also. 
and i'm just going to take the back piece now and join it to the front piece on the side so join the back piece to the front piece on the side join with the same allowance you left the 0 0.75 allowance i left is what i'm going to use to join it so you can see i went ahead to iron all the seams open so go ahead and iron all the seams open it is very important to iron it properly i went ahead to run a stitch on all the allowances i have after joining that is where i'll be inserting my boning into i'll go ahead now and fix in my cup first this is a homemade bar cup that i'll be attaching to this corset you can use a ready-made bar cup or a homemade bar cup i am going to use my hemming gum to iron it on the bust area I am done fixing the back up here. I went ahead to fix in the loops for the back. If you don't know how to fix the loop, I have a video on my channel. I'm going to put the link in the description box so that you can watch how to fix a loop to the back of your dress. So now I'm just going to go ahead now and use the lining to turn the neckline of both the front and the back. You're not going to use the lining to turn the armhole. You're going to leave the armhole opened just turn the neckline of both the front and the back with the lining and you're also going to turn the M of the top with the lining. I have turned the neckline with the lining here but before I turn the down part, I want to show you how to fix in your boning. You can see the direction my boning is facing. This is exactly how you are going to fix it in. On the parts where you have the back hop, the boning will not go over the back hop. You are going to stop where the bra cup ends but for all other parts you are going to fix it in all through the casing after fixing the boning i will use the lining to turn the down part of the top to so close in the sides now go ahead and iron your allowance the way i ironed mine inside now so after ironing this way i'm just going to run a stitch on top of it to close it down but before I close it, I'm going to fix in my modesty panel to one side of the back. I am going to fix it on the left side, so you can decide which side you want your modesty panel to be. So I'm just going to fix it in to the left side like this, and I'm going to run a stitch to secure it down. I forgot to tell you earlier that I added interfacing to the modesty panel. You need interfacing on your modesty panel, it is compulsory. And you're also going to fix in boning to that part also. On the center back, you're going to fix in boning there also to give support to the center back by the time you're going to lace it. I am done closing the center back and this is what we have. The last thing for me to do on this top is to fix in the sleeves. So now let's cut the sleeves. I have these two pieces of fabric here and the length I have here is 21 inches while the width is 13 inches. I'm going to go over to the sewing machine now and fold the down part of this fabric. I'll fold it on both sides, the top and bottom. I'm just going to fold in with one inch. I'll do the same thing to the other sleeve. For the part I want to use as the M of the sleeve, I went ahead to add elastic to that part. But for the part I want to attach to the armhole, I'm just going to bring in the top now. And I'm going to use the armhole of this top to cut out the armhole on the sleeves. So I'm just going to cut it out like so with the, and I'm going to leave an allowance of one inch by the side of the sleeve. And I'm going to cut out like this. I will use this one to cut out the armhole for the other sleeve. I will also be attaching elastic to the upper part of the sleeve. So I'm just going to attach my elastic with my safety pin. The length of the elastic I cut out is 8 inches. This was after I was done attaching the elastic. I am just going to join the sides of the sleeve with 1 inch allowance all the way down. And after joining the sides, I am going to attach it to the top. Just fix the armhole of the sleeve to the armhole of the top. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
please hit the like button leave a comment share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel please turn on your notification bell so that you will get notified anytime i upload a new video i'll see you in my next one bye